what's up, everybody? This is Maggie Reichardt, and you are listening to Nursing Uncharted, a podcast that navigates all the different ways that we can use this license by talking to ambassadors of different specialties. So thank you so much for putting us on today or on this, you know, the podcast space or YouTube. I really appreciate it. And I've had so much fun so far doing this podcast. And I want to continue to try and make this relevant to our nursing listeners um, and interesting to you. So, uh, you know, most importantly, you guys. So please, if you have a, if you feel like there's an avenue of nursing that you would love to hear about, please let us know. DM us on Instagram at Nursing Uncharted. Um, you know, feedback is so integral to making this podcast your favorite podcast. So any feedback or ideas you can give us is welcomed. So today we are stepping outside of the inpatient outpatient realm a little bit. Um, you know, this sits a little bit outside the box. It's a job that I've done before and I can say that it is rewarding it is challenging, it is cup filling, ing, all the ings, and it's summer camp nursing. And summer camp jobs, in my experience, are short-term contracts. They are contract-based, and they can provide a little bit of a break for you know, nurses and inpatient or outpatient positions that just need a little bit of a break. Or it's also, you know, in my experience, it was a good job filler between travel contracts. Um, and uh, this particular camp that we will highlight in this episode even has some global travel opportunities that enriched you know, my experience past what I thought a normal summer camp was. So this summer camp in particular that we'll be highlighting this episode is called Summit Camp and Travel. It's a camp that settled outside New York City in Honesdale, Pennsylvania that focuses on creating a therapeutic sleepaway camp and travel program uh, for children and teens with learning, developmental, social, and emotional needs. So here to talk about Summit Camp is travel director Thea Mullis. Thea is a native of Savannah, Georgia. She's been the head of Summit Tour program since 2014. Thea plans and executes each facet of Summit's travel and uh, weekender program um, at their itineraries. Her incredible insight and experience ensures that trips will meet special populations needs and will be stimulating socially and personally in ways that have a lasting impact. So Thea, welcome to the show. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for thinking of me and having me on. I know. I'm so, I'm so, we've been trying to like coordinate getting, getting you on for a while just because I would really love to bring, you know, good nurses to the camp, you know? Yeah, me too. I mean, nurses are such an integral part of our camp and, uh, you know, keeping the kiddos safe and, and, you know, those that are on medication, medicated. Uh, so mm -hmm. I love the nurses and I love good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I've never asked you, I don't think, like, how did you start out with Summit? Like, what brought you to camp? Oh, that's a funny story. Uh, so my degree is in speech therapy, but I've mm -hmm. never actually worked as a speech therapist because I found this <laughs> crazy cool job and I never <laughs> left. Um, so yeah, I studied abroad in Ireland um, my last semester of college and I worked at a school for, for kids with um, autism, special needs. Okay. And... I just got bit by the travel bug. So I was planning on taking a gap year uh, in between then and going to my master's. And I, um, I, uh, after Ireland, we were done with our study abroad and I wanted to keep the traveling going. And so me and my friend, we didn't buy plane tickets back home. We kept going. And so we maxed out all of our credit cards. We just kept <laughs> Kept going. We went to London and Italy and, and Paris and we went to all, you know, it was a Euro trip. Um, yeah. And so I got bit by the travel bug. Yeah. And so after I finally ran out of money, like six months later, I wanted to figure out how I could combine my two new passions, traveling and special needs. And I was like, oh, well, there's no way to combine them. But good old Google said that there was. <laughs> oh and my gosh, that's wild. You I Googled. Found this camp. Special needs travel. And I found Summit Camp. The and Mecca. <laughs> I applied. And guess where they were going that year on their travel? They were going to Ireland. And I had just spent six months in Ireland. So 
That's, I, yeah. That's amazing. Oh yeah. my gosh. Pretty cool. That like fell right in your lap. Yeah, it did. And so I was hired right away to go on travel, which is not typical of a, of a counselor. Typically yeah. you work a couple years at summit camp and then yeah. you get promoted up to go on travel. But they took me right on travel because I had just I had just been there um, in Ireland. Oh no, I studied there for a summer, so I was I, I had okay. only been there like two months. But yeah, uh, I went on travel, and that year the tours were to the British Isles. So it was it was London, Ireland, and Scotland, and then so cool. I got hired to go on the next tour, which was France and Italy. And then and you had already been on all those places, like. It, it was it, no, but it was a completely different experience going with this camp. Oh, uh, oh my yeah. gosh! And um, so <laughs> yeah, I I went that summer, and then on my last tour, the France and Italy trip, um, I had a kid that I really connected with. He was he was quite difficult, but I I love a challenge. And um, so <laughs> yeah, he, you do. he had been passed around of the groups a lot because he was he was a little emotionally challenging. Yeah. And uh, I just loved him. Everything he did, I thought was hilarious. And you know, he worked <laughs> well with well with me because you know we built we built a good rapport. And that that's what happens. We hire people yeah. with lots of different personalities because the kids have lots of pers- different personalities. Yeah. And so you try to you know see what's uh, yin and yang and what works. So For sure. I after that summer, I got hired by his family to move out to Los Angeles and I made it for him. And so he and I would go back to camp every summer and then I'd go back to LA and be a nanny. Um, And then I ended up nannying for the stars that had special needs. It was, it's just crazy how life just takes you. (laughs) Just like literally just picks you up and just brings you forward into this life. That's so wild. Oh my gosh. I love that. So that's how I ended up here. Eventually I got offered uh, the full-time travel director position. Uh, I had kind of been groomed for it from the beginning. Um, yeah. Because the old director, uh, she was, you know, looking to start a family and, and everything. Mm. And yeah. Okay. So. Gotcha. Very cool. Oh my gosh. I knew about the LA. I knew that you were a nanny out in LA, but I didn't know all of that like beginning stuff and how like you just like went That's how I went found. there. That's amazing. <laughs> so let's let's just kind of identify what camp is. If you could give me a little bit of like a mission slash like objectives of the camp. Sure. So um, Summit Camp has been around for 50 plus years. We were established in 1969 and we've been serving the same population of um, kiddos and young adults since then. And it is geared towards kids and young adults with social mm-hmm. emotional issues, um, ADD, ADHD, high functioning autism, uh, learning disabilities, things of that nature. So mm-hmm. the best way to really describe all, the majority of our kids, or they're just a little quirky. Like we don't, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, yes, we ask them to list their, we ask them to list their labels um, on the application, but we really try to look at the individual child and, you know, yeah. what, what they need and what they're working on. So um, yeah, I like to, you know, tell people our, our kids are just a little quirky. So I think that that's a really great way to, because I picked up on that in the first, like, you know, when I first started working for camp is that, you know, all of the staff really see the kids as just kids. They're just kids. They don't see any like, you know, labels or setbacks. Like they just see the kids. Any diagnosis is rarely talked about, like out of context, you know, I mean, they're really just there to have a summer camp experience and all kids are you know, they're all completely different. You know, they're all, you know, going through their individualized, you know, stressors and things, and they're all working on different things. And I think it's really amazing how the counselors and all the staff really like know each kid and what their triggers are and how to like help them through their, you know, situation that they're going through. It's, it's really amazing. It's amazing. Like how camp can individualize everybody's growth, I think. Absolutely. And that, that's exactly what we preach during our, uh, our two week orientation to all the counselors. Most of the counselors that come to us are, you know, going to college for special education, speech therapy, occupational therapy, maybe they're pre-nursing and they're coming to do an internship in the med center. Um, you know, a whole, whole array of things, but somehow, you know, connected. And so they're, they either have experience or they're looking to gain more experience. And so this, these are people that want to come work with this population and are are prepared, um, you know, for things to be a little different than a regular camp. But 
um, that's that's what we that's what we preach to them during the orientation is that you know we want the kids to feel like that this camp is just like any other camp, which it is. Uh, yeah. It just has a little extra TLC love and support um, that they might need. You know, uh, we teach about um, de-escalation techniques and mm-hmm. coping mechanisms and things like that. And the orientation is actually really fun. It's it's one of my favorite parts. Uh, you know, getting to participate in that because it's kind of like adult camp, but you're learning, and yeah. then the kids come, and then you're like. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> this is all, yes, it's the magic. It's the magic on the it's hill. It's the magic on the hill. That's our slogan. Yes. <laughs> That's actually, I didn't realize like the demographic of counselors that everybody is, well, most people are are like, you know, going into that. That makes so much sense because I just, I remember like, you know, being a part of camp for the first time and being like, everyone is amazing. Like with all of the kids, every, like, there's not a bad apple as far as like counselors go. I'm like, this is, this, everybody is just so knowledgeable and like loves the kids so much. They do. And that's not something you can teach. Uh, no. that, that that's very, especially in, you know, like college age kids these days, it's, <laughs> Yeah, we're we're yeah. really good at, uh, at at finding those good-hearted people, or they're yeah. just attracted to us. They're just attracted to what we oh, stand for, sure. for in our mission statement and uh, and the magic that that we create. They create it, not us. The the, yeah. the counselors are the ones that that create it with uh, coming with all their you know acceptance and open-heartedness. And anyway, it's just well, I think I think the organicness of all of it, I think is the, something that's like the real magic, like the real, you know, specialty of it is because you're right. You don't teach it, but like those relationships between campers and counselors are there, you know, it's just like a natural progression of being at camp and like getting to know the camp, you know, the campers and stuff. Yeah. The rapport is built pretty quickly, uh, between the the counselors and the nurses as well. The nurses are are just, you know, as much a part of the family as as the rest of us, as as the counselors, as all the staff, you know, we see everybody as a part of the summit family and we say that a lot. Yeah. Um, Yeah. For sure. I mean, especially on travel too, when there's only, you know, there's like you know, five or six camp staff and then there's the nurse. I mean, you really get uh, you got that camaraderie. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. in it. You're in the trenches. You got to figure you're it out. It. You're on the go. Yeah. But you really become. I mean, you are like a solid part of that of that group. You have to be very cohesive as a group, you know, in order to to put on all of this. It's oh, it's definitely. truly amazing. It's travel is another whole um you know magic, a whole other ball game that we can put such an amazing trip on for like. 25, you know, plus kids. Yeah. It's the magic on the move. So typically. <laughs> is that you know, what it is? Yeah, yeah. That's what I call it. Yeah. Um, so typically summer camp runs <clears throat> about, we have 10 weeks and kids can come for as little as two weeks. They can come for up to 10 weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can break it down different, different ways, but the, the staff are there throughout. So, you know, yeah. they, they, they get really close with kids. And then when it's time for that kid to go home, like, you know, they're blubbering mess. They're crying. <laughs> um, but travel is a 19 day, uh, typically tour. You can do a 19 day tour or a two week tour. And that's why it works out for nurses a lot. Yeah. From what I understand, mm-hmm. especially the traveling nurses, because you guys can kind of like pick it up in between a contract yep. and, and, and it works out well. Um, I have a, I have a, you know, we have a good, <clears throat> good sense of ones that have come over the years mm-hmm. and, and they, they love it. They're like, okay, next year I'm going to work my whole schedule around making sure that I'm going to be done with my contract by yeah. June so I can go on this trip and then pick up another contract. <laughs> my recruiters is just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of travel nursing, right? It's like, you can start a job whenever you want to start the, the next job. You know, you're like, okay, I'm going to do this little break and like go to Europe with, you know, 25 kids and, <laughs> and then I'm going to go back to normal like hospital nursing. It was, it's great. Yeah. I mean, and, and although of course you guys are working, you're med passing, but yeah. also like having fun. I think it's quite different from, you know, the trauma of an ER. I've never been a nurse before, but I can imagine that it's a little less stressful of an environment. Yeah. You're going zip lining and then be like, okay, let's give her lunch medications. And then you're going kayaking and right. You know. They're like in little spurts. Like I remember on one of the trips, we went to Prague, Budapest, and Vienna. 
Mm-hmm. And I remember like the first couple of days I was kind of like, oh, this is great. Like I'm just kind of a fly on the wall and, you know, I'm like giving out meds and, and then like all of a sudden, like, boom, one can have a nosebleed. One kid is like dizzy and diaphoretic. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so it, it comes in like little, you know, little spurts because as a nurse, so we'll kind of get into like, you know, what nursing responsibilities are like and, and travel, but you are the medical resource for the trip. Um, and in it at the med center, you, you're kind of with a team of like a handful of nurses and a physician, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, definitely there's responsibility on, on you for the health and safety of, of the, the tour. You yeah. know, you sometimes you have to take care of staff as well. Right. If those staff get really sunburnt or dehydrated, which makes me mad because we're preaching about it all the time to the kids. But then sometimes you're busy taking care of them and you don't take care of yourself. And right. the nurse is like, well, now I got to take care of you instead of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I have this journal. I've told Thea about before. I have this journal that I, I did for one of the trips and I was reading through it before this episode. And, and there was like a couple of times where I'm like, oh, you know, Cheryl, one of the counselors is having, is, you know, not feeling well. So I gave her some cold racks and I put her to bed and I'm like, we were going today without her. <laughs> it was like somebody else, like another counselor had a stomach ache and like, you know, did, did gave her like a couple things and put her back to bed. <laughs> I was like, you really do take care of the staff too. So you do, you do, oh. but it's, it's really fun. Uh, I mean, you and I have so many funny stories from, from all the trips, because you you oh went to gosh. Prague, Budapest, and Vienna with me yep. and the kids, and you went to I went the Disney Alaskan cruise. Yeah, I did Vancouver and Alaska Disney Alaskan cruise, and then I did a weekend or a couple weekenders. Yeah, yeah so weekenders for mm-hmm. those that are listening, weekenders are um, are during the school year program. So mm-hmm. one weekend per month, uh, we take a group of kiddos and young adults to do. Uh, uh, like do like a socialization trip. So I think the one you went on, we went to uh, Six Flags. Yeah, did we, we did go to, go to Six, Six Flags Trade Adventure. Yeah, yeah. And so this weekend, I'm flying up on Friday, um, and I'm taking 40 kids and young adults from New York City on a bus down to Washington D.C. for President's Day weekend. Oh so. my gosh. Ah, oh, oh. And it's Nurse Veronica this time. You know, Nurse nice. Veronica. Yeah, she's awesome. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. You keep saying young adults too. Has the, well, cause in, I, I, have we kind of expanded to incorporate like an older population in the last few years? Yeah, absolutely. And maybe you don't know about this. We created this thing called the center program and we mm-hmm. also have a independence, a nine month residential independence house. So kid, young adults, See, I'm trying to correct myself. Young adults, <laughs> postgraduates of high school, are actually living up at camp right now in okay. these dorm style houses that we built. We 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 knocked down those old trailers yeah. that used to be there, mm-hmm. and we built these new uh, dorm style cabins. So they have you know a kitchen and they have suite rooms and then they have a living room. Yeah, and so there's um, young adults living there. Um, and they're set up with jobs in town. And so they're, they're working on independent skills, you know, learning how to budget meal planning for the week, which I need that as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> you just like come to the door. I'm like, Hey, what'd you cook for me today? <laughs> I actually forgot to eat today <laughs> because I've been so busy and I just had like a bag of crisp right before this. And I'm like, Oh, so nutritional Theo. So anyway, um, the young adults at the center program, it's a nine month or the independence house. It's a nine month residential program. They're living up there right now. So we've expanded up to age 23, 24. And then our center mm-hmm. program is during the summer and it's the same thing. It's just a, a shorter amount of time. Maybe they're seven weeks or two weeks. Okay. And it's, uh, the same thing, postgraduates up to like 23 or 24. So yeah, we've expanded okay. our age a little bit. Um, and then I just got a lot of the kids, uh, like teenagers, a lot of times, you know, they'll be like 18, 19, and they'll be like, stop calling me a kid. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm an adult. And I'm like, yes, you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. But you'll always be my little guy. That I've known you since you were eight, so <laughs> yeah. you're my kid. Yeah, right. You're my camp kid. Everybody says yeah. that. I don't have kids, but I feel like I'm a mother to 200 kids. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You totally are. You really are. We want to take a quick break from this episode to talk about the industry leader in travel nurse staffing, American Mobile. 
combining the largest network of facilities and providers in the country with top-level benefits like higher earning potential, premium health insurance, and 401k matching, American Mobile puts you in the driver's seat of your travel nursing career. Make sure to visit AmericanMobile.com today to discover a world of adventure with American Mobile. That's AmericanMobile.com, the first step towards your next travel nursing adventure. So I want to go over um, like more logistics of like we can start with camp camp, like summer camp and like what a typical day would look like for a summer camp nurse um, and kind of like responsibilities. And then we'll get into travel. Absolutely. Um, so the health center, we have a full health center where the, the nurses live and eat, sleep and breathe. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So they're there all the time, the health center. So they start their day off with uh morning medications. Uh, Mm -hmm. So you're typically, as a nurse, you're assigned to a cabin or a two or three um, cabins of kids. And so those are the kids you're responsible for. And then there's an alternate nurse for your days off during the week, right? Mm -hmm. So those kids really, they know their nurse, they trust their nurse, and we want that. We want them to build rapport with their nurse over the, you know, weeks that they're there. Yeah. Um, So that they feel safe coming to them with any issues, any problems, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so you start off with morning medications and that's in the dining hall at breakfast. Most med passes mm-hmm. are at meal times, and then the other med passes are up in the health center. So mm-hmm. nurses come down for their cabins and you sit, the, the kids sit at assigned tables, um, mm. at the, at the dining hall. So they're always sitting with their bunk, their cabin, yeah. the bunk. So it's pretty easy to find them typically, unless they, mm. you know, like, oh, I've got to go to horseshoe early, which is like playtime right out after. <laughs> and then the nurse is like, can somebody go chase down Jimmy so-and-so? <laughs> so-and-so, yeah. To come back and get their medication. Um, <laughs> so yeah, morning med passes at breakfast. And then we have mid AM med pass. Um, so any, any kids that have morning medicine, their mm-hmm. counselor knows that they've been notified by their nurse mm. um, at the beginning of the session. And so they bring them up to the health center to get their mid AM. And then there's lunch med pass. So that's at the mm-hmm. dining hall as well. Same thing. You're assigned to your cabin and then there's dinner uh, or there's mid afternoon. That's up at the health center again. And then mm-hmm. there is dinner medication pass. And yeah. then also there's nighttime medication. So many, many, many of our kids have ADHD and, you know, right. racing mind syndrome. So many of them are on melatonin um, or in other, other medicines that are at night as yeah. well. And so for that, we have nighttime snack. And so kind of like the snack wagon comes around to all the bunks at night and the nurse comes, um, right during or right mm. after the snack. Um, cause many other, many kids need food to take medication yeah. alongside. And so they come to the cabin at night and while mm-hmm. the kids are in their PJs or getting ready and for, for circle time, cause we do like a, you know, a high and the low of the day, like sitting in a circle and the nurse yeah. usually pops in around that time. And they like to say they're high and the low. And so they're really an integral Aww. part there. You get really close yeah. to your cabin. They know, you know, their kids like the back of their hand. Yeah. These nurses you know, all are the health amazing. histories of everyone. I mean, that's one of your responsibilities is to, you know, understand, you know, the, just the background, the stuff that, that isn't really, you know, ever present at camp you know per se but like you know all of that stuff in the background um so that's yeah that's one of the things and that's certainly pertains to travel to the travel aspect too like you I want to say how early before travel do you get to camp to do like prep work usually three to five days um, you get there because I mean it is a mass amount of medication and as you can attest to most nurses like to pack that out for at Mm -hmm. least the first five to 10 days to, yeah, yeah. You can explain the packing out process. Yeah. 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 So packing. So yeah, like three to five days beforehand, you'll, you'll get all of the, you'll kind of make your binder. Your binder has uh, all of the kids health histories, uh, medications that are on file. You'll put your nursing license in there, your certifications. You have a letter from the camp physician. This is for travel, but you know, packing kind of everything that you're going to need your, your medical, you know, bag. And you, you'll also pack, it's like a duffel bag <laughs> and it's like, or suitcase or, you know, whatever we're using. And, um, you'll have like 
you know, there's, you'll take supplies from the medical center. So you'll have like your PRNs as needed stuff. You'll get, you know, first aid stuff. There's, you know, you, you have access to whatever you need at the medical center to like, you know, pack what you need, but packing medications is, um, uh, so you get like sheets of medications. If people have done like home health before they'll see, you know, you get these sheets or like rolls of medications and you want to pack you package them so that you know who gets what at what time of day. So like I would have a large baggie of all of my campers that take, you know, morning meds. And then each camper with morning meds would have an individual mini baggie that would have like the five rights on it. So like their name, their me- the medication is, the dose, the root is always like by mouth and then the time. And then I would have a large bag for every time of day. So like morning, mid-morning, lunch, you know, mid-afternoon, dinner, nighttime for every day of the week, which is like a a bigger bag. And then so that's so you kind of do that for, you know, the first five, 10 days of the trip to get you through so that you have these like individual bags. And then when you want to go out for the day, you know, like you know, I would only pack the times of days that I would need in my backpack. So if we went out, let's say after breakfast and we were going to be gone until, you know, after dinner, I would take out just that bag for, you know, Tuesday and I would pack mid morning, lunch, mid afternoon and dinner meds. And I would already have those like already, you know, made in the, in the baggies. I would just put that like in my backpack along with like first aid stuff, Tylenol, Advil, Pepsid, EpiPens, you know, just whatever you need it and your binder. That's kind of like, that's, that's how you would pack each day, but, you know, taking, taking, you know, packing each individual, you know, campers meds and stuff, it does, it does take time. I think I remember it took me, it took me a while the first time I did it on travel, but like, you know, then you kind of get the hang of it. And then like the longer you go on um, the trip, like the less medications there are. So like the less load you have to carry. (laughs) So, but yeah, that's, that's essentially, you know, packing. Yeah. It takes a lot of organization and, Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think it, I think it works out well. And, uh, I was going to tell, so you said something about everything's by mouth. Occasionally though, we have those that have the growth hormone shots that we have to carry around and make sure we find a refrigerator and ice packs. That's right. I was going to say, you know, that's one of the nurse responsibilities. You know, you, you know, what is coming. So like I, there was, we were going, there was one, um, camper that had a growth hormone shot and it was like an $8,000 pen and I had two of them and it had to be refrigerated at all times. So I had to plan ahead of time how I was gonna keep this cold because we were moving to different locations like every couple of days, we might not have a fridge at every hotel. So I think I had them, I had it in a lunch box and I had like a, a couple ice packs and like every place we would go, I would like check in with their kitchen and have them like freeze the ice packs overnight or like normally one one room would like have a fridge and that would be my room and I would put it in there. But like, yeah, just things like that you have to like, you know, anticipate and, but I knew that that med was coming based on this camper's like health history and, and like what to expect. But (laughs) yeah, that's kind of a. Same with those EpiPens. So the EpiPens, the counselor Mm. of the kid usually carries around like on a necklace on on them, just in case, heaven forbid, you know, somebody gets in touch with a nut and they're allergic to all nuts, then we'd have to, but not gonna let this ever happen. Except one time, the Alaska trip that we did before you, there was a kid that came on it that was allergic to salmon and he came to Alaska. (laughs) Oh no. So uh, they had a few scares on that one and I think they actually had to use the pen. (laughs) Oh my God. Poor kid. We don't know. We don't know. Oh EpiPens, but God. yeah, I get nervous about those EpiPens if a counselor says, oh, I don't know where I put the EpiPen. What do you mean? It's supposed to be on your neck at all times. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had to take it off to put on my life jacket for canoeing and da-da-da. Like, oh, those are <laughs> most, expensive. 
I feel like most of the kids too are very aware of like what they need to take and when, and they more so know where their EpiPen is at oh, all yeah. times. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, one kid would, would ask me like, do you have my EpiPen? <laughs> I'm like I do, you, we will be fine. You're not gonna have me. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. Packing, you know, is the responsibility and like giving medications on time in a timely manner. I well, remember most of the kids will let you know about that too. Mm -hmm. Nurse, meds. <laughs> yes. Sometimes the kids are not the most polite. We're working on that. But I remember there was a kid, I think, I think it was on your trip. He, he would, he would always come up five minutes before you were ready because it was exactly on the dot, the time that he's supposed to take it. And he'd say, meds and you'd be like honey i'm getting set up can you give me one second i'm supposed to take my medications at point zero zero <laughs> yeah and you're like okay i had one there was one kid that he had a particularly difficult um sheet of medications to open and I, it would like take me a little bit to like get it open <laughs> and he would always like just kind of i mean he wouldn't say anything to me but you could just see like the the grief <laughs> on his face that he probably was like waiting for so long to like get these <laughs> meds from me and there was one morning that i did it really quickly and the only thing he said to me was like huh there's hope for you yet <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> they say the darndest things. Oh they my gosh. They're very judgy. <laughs> they do. I mean, this, and they don't know that they're being funny. That's like one of the like just funniest things about them is that they're just hilarious kids. And it, so, one story that I wanted to share was we were in Prague and we were in the Jewish quarter and um, going through like historical, you know, religious, uh, like a tour or something. We went to an old Jewish cemetery and that was being used between the 1400s and 1700s. And <clears throat> there was, I guess back then they used to put casket on top of casket and there was like 12,000 tombs in this like tiny little cemetery. And one of the campers was like, huh, it's like a seven layer dip of corpses. <laughs> Yeah, the filter is not there <laughs> for a lot. Oh, they don't even realize that no, no. And then you're not trying to hold it she in didn't because they'll get offended. It at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, that is so, like, you're so right in a weird, terrible way. You're right. It's a seven layer tip, of course. <laughs> Oh. oh, yeah, they say the darndest things. It, it, and the lack of filter, you will, you really have to have a tough shell on yourself because if, you know, you're not wearing a good looking outfit, ooh, they will let you know. Yeah. They will let you know <laughs> the outfit is not flattering to you, Miss Thea. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, the, the truth is always there. <laughs> we don't usually have a lot of trouble with fibbing or things like that it's very straightforward yes. and direct and a little too direct sometimes so yeah you know, we're working on softening up those edges sometimes they're very honest you know mm -hmm. they're very but it's so pure it's so unbelievably pure <laughs> yeah but in that aspect you know sometimes as, as a counselor when you're watching out for their safety you've got a you know they can be quite naive uh i remember one time we yeah. were in maybe we were in france we were no we were in spain and um, I don't know if this is the politically correct term, uh, the like pickpocket, there, there's all these like gypsies there and yeah. you know, they come up, you know, trying to show you a map and then it's covering up your fanny pack or whatever you have on and somebody else will come and like get your, oh, get your money out of there. No. And so a lot of my kids, you know, I have them wear things they can't lose. I don't, I hate yeah. for them to wear purses that they sit down or, or, you know, yeah. backpacks, I like them to wear, you know, those necklace wallets or mm -hmm. fanny packs because it's attached to them and they're less likely to lose things because executive yeah. functioning and organization is something that we're working on for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I remember I was buying all the kids ice cream at this ice cream stand and we were in, we were in some kind of a quarter and there was these monuments all around it was really pretty so the kids were kind of all standing around having their ice cream while the rest of them were in line and I was paying for all of them 
And uh, I turn around and there's a lady, I see her, she has, she's distracting my kid with like these bubble, big, huge bubble things. And oh. there's a group of kids over there. And then I just see all the pickpockets like creeping up <sighs> and I just run away from the ice cream stand and start yelling at them. Hey, get away from my kids, get away from my kids. So I look like a crazy person and all the kids were like, Miss Thea, you were very mean to the bubble people. <laughs> Like, you don't know what they were trying. That's amazing. Wow. I remember there was a bubble guy like that in Prague in the square. And I like thought it was so magical. Oh my God. What if it's a, like a ploy to like pickpock people? Oh no. I mean, a lot of times those, about those, those guys are just like working for tips or whatever, but you, I could obviously see, cause I was far away. I was at this ice cream stand and I could, I just saw it all unfolding. They were all distracted and their backpacks were all sitting on the ground. And I was like, oh ah. my gosh. Wow. Actually, you did say, you know, how we're kind of like working on executive functioning. What are some of the things that you are trying to focus on in regards to like camper development when you're on travel? Oh, that's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, so on travel, we're definitely trying to harness some of those independent skills. We're trying to get them ready mm -hmm. for group living situations because many of these yeah. kids are our teenagers, they're 16, 17, 18, getting ready to go off to, you know, like a college type living program, dorm mm -hmm. style living, or um, a group living situation of some kind. And many of our kids don't share very well. They're used to, you know, having their yes. own space at home, their own room, their own iPad, uh, you know, and just kind of being on their own all the time and not having to share or be like, oh, what do you want for dinner? Or, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we have to teach our or young adults about conversational turn taking because mm. many of them are really stuck on a topic or they perseverate yeah. on something like trains or airplanes or, um, you know, birthdays. Many of our kids are so smart. Uh, yeah. you know, they, they, a lot of amazing there I've been, I've met quite a few over the years that the first thing they say to you is not hi or hello. How you doing? My name is it's hi. When, when's your birthday? Oh, well, my birthday's May 10th. Oh, what year? 1990. Oh, you, you were born on a Thursday. And I'm like, <laughs> let me see. Sorry. Was I born on a Thursday? <laughs> yes, I was. They have these crazy calculation abilities. It's, that's so wild. But, you know, that's not exactly appropriate just to go up, you know, apprehend yeah. some stranger and say, when's your birthday? <laughs> and, and yell at them in a tone. <laughs> you know, you have to say, oh, well, I do this thing. I, I like to, you know, when know when your birthday is. You know, my name's Sam. Like, you know, we try to teach them these things. Um, and then, yeah, another example is last year I had, uh, many of our kids are very, 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 you know, they have a high IQ level. Um, yeah. Just they, they lack a little bit of the social skills, which, you know, they're here to sure. learn. Um, and he, he was really into uh, geography and countries. And I remember we were at this museum and there was a huge... Um, map of the continent of Africa, and he could name every single country there. It had like these open things where you could, you were trying to guess what countries were in Africa, and you could open it. And so he would say, this is blah, 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 blah. And he would name everyone in that open up. Yep, that's right. Yep, that's right. That's right. How do you know all of this? <laughs> that's amazing. And I'm the travel director. I should, I should be able to name all these countries. I couldn't even name, you know, like more than 10. <laughs> oh my god! And he could name every, it was crazy. Um, I remember there was one, there was one trip where we were going through Austria and we were on the tour bus and our tour guide was like telling us about like the history of Austria. And one of the campers was like schooling the tour guide on the history of Vienna. And she ended up like taking the mic and just like being the tour guide for the rest of the day. I'm like, this is just so amazing. She knew so much about Vienna. Many I, all of the tour guides I ever hire, I, I tell them and I warn them ahead of time that, you know, I need you to be very patient. You're my going to be pepper, fired. My kids will pepper you with questions and they will also correct you. And usually they're kind of right. <laughs> yeah, right. But because they're just, you know, such yeah. geniuses in, in certain aspects of life. So they, yeah. they can really perseverate on a topic. So going mm. back to things that we're working on uh, yeah. is you know, conversational turn taking. Okay, you've been talking about, you know, trains and the motor systems of trains and the engineering of trains and the history of trains for well over 15 minutes. My attention is, is exhausted now. 
from this topic. Mm. You have to give me a turn to talk about something I want to talk about. And so, you know, our counselors are trained in facilitating, facilitating conversations between mm. uh, campers, you know, so sometimes we're like the middlemen and, you know, we try to get the flow going and then we <laughs> step back and, you know, go to something else. Yeah. But a lot of times to start with, you know, this one will just be going on and on about trains and this one over here will be going on and on about Disney and you got to kind of find a common ground. <laughs> yeah. But then if you find, if you find two that have the same common interest, wow, you can never get them to shut up, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was, yeah, I was just thinking about, there was the same camper that I was talking about before with the tour guide stuff. I remember they were, there was like all, they were all in a group and I don't know, conversation went sour and everybody went silent or something. And the one girl was like, so aliens, are they out there? <laughs> <laughs> she was just like, well, this is, we're going to start a new topic because it got awkward for some, some reason. So over uh, the just... years, I've learned that you can kind of see their hamster wheels turning inside, yeah. inside their heads. So their, their brains are hardwired differently than ours and m most of the time when they have adhd it's it's just bouncing off the walls and it's yeah. it's going from topic to topic inside their head so they're having a hard time focusing on the sm the mundane small talk that's how they yeah. see it you know yeah, whereas yeah. we see small talk as polite mm. they think it's unnecessary why do i have to spend my time making small talk with a person I don't want to over something yeah. I don't care about. I'd rather spend my time trying to learn something new on YouTube about my interest, which yeah. makes a lot of sense. It does. You know? It makes <laughs> Why do we spend so much we time? Like crafting? half the time we don't want to be talking small talk either. <laughs> right. We just, we just have the filter to not yeah. say, yeah, that's dumb. Bye. <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> we have a filter to be polite. So this is something that we're working on, but uh, as well as executive functioning skills, um, besides the conversational things that we're definitely working on as a part of social skills, um, mm. and understanding not to cut in line. You know, many, many times our kids don't have spatial awareness. I, there's this one kid, he is seven foot tall. He's huge. He has a backpack all the time, and he's like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> Anytime he goes in a gift shop, I'm like, I assign a counselor to him. Go, go with him. Walk, make sure he doesn't knock anything over with his backpack. Yeah. Because literally a bull in a china shop. <laughs> and he loses in everything. Shop. Loses everything. He buys souvenirs, and then he gets mad that he lost them. And I'm like, well, where's the last time you had him? Well, I was playing with it. Um in the bus two cities ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, well, I don't know where that is. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, but as far as executive functioning, uh, we're working on, you know, just planning uh, for, for group living situations. So, mm. you know, waking yourself up on time. You know, I tell yeah. the kids the night before on the bus microphone what the plan is for the next day. Um, yeah. We try to do what's called chunking, giving them little pieces of information to remember. Because if you, mm -hmm. especially me with my rapid sure. speech, if I give them too much instruction all at once, they're going to feel overwhelmed and yeah. and sensory overload and not be able to remember any of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I say, hey, guys, in the morning, wake up is going to be at 8 a.m. Breakfast is going to be at 830 in the lobby. And then we're going to load the bus at 9. What time are we going to wake up? 8 a.m. What time are we going to be in the lobby? 830. <laughs> What time are you going to be on the bus? Nine o'clock. So I make them repeat it back to me and I just tell them what we're doing in the morning. So yeah. those are the three times that they need to remember. And I say, set your alarms. So I want them to, even mm -hmm. though we have safety nets and safety um, like systems to catch them, uh, I give them the directions and say what you need for tomorrow. You need a backpack with water. Make sure you apply sunscreen mm -hmm. and don't forget to brush your teeth in the morning and apply deodorant and take a shower tonight. Um, yeah. But of course our counselors go around at nine o'clock at night and say, hey guys, bedtime's in 30 minutes. Is everybody taking a shower? All right. Do you have your clothes laid out for tomorrow? Good job. And then they come out, come the next mm -hmm. morning at 8.05 and just knock on the door. Okay, good, glad to see you guys are up. Or come on guys, get out of bed, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you set alarms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, and some, some are good at those things and, you know, some definitely need the work. So this is a, a teaching opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then just 
traveling around and following directions and keeping up with your things. And, you know, we have to pack. So every hotel, we move hotel every, you know, three to four days. Um, yeah, depending on, cause we're always going, you know, we mm-hmm. might, we're going to be in Prague. We're moving over to Vienna. We're going to, you know, uh, Budapest we're, we're moving constantly. Yeah. So remembering their phone chargers that are plugged yeah. into the, to the thing, remembering their toothbrushes, remembering, you know, they might've taken all of their stuff out of their suitcase and put it in the drawers and then gotten on the bus with an empty suitcase. And then we get to the next place and I say, Honey, I'm unloading the suitcases. And I'm like, why is this one so light? I'm like, here's your suitcase. Why is it so light? Uh, oh, my clothes are back at the other hotel. What? <laughs> the other country? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I guess I don't have any clothes. No, you don't. <laughs> so, you know, I've had instances where we've had to, like, find a store in a foreign country, go buy all new clothes because they left them, a con- you know, and they don't understand. Well, can we just go yeah. back and get them? No, we just drove six hours. <laughs> yes. I think that's also kind of what the, like, amazing, the fact that these kids, a um, lot of them really rely on, like, the same thing in routine so much, and they go on this incredibly spontaneous trip where you're just constantly moving and changing. I think that it just like provides so much growth in like such a small amount of time. You can really see, I mean, you can see the growth in the kids like between day one and and day 19. You sure can. Uh, Across camp and across travel or or all of our programs. uh, Yeah. You know, three weeks is really the minimum that we want a a kid or camper to come and join us for any of our programs because you know, the first week you're just learning all the rules. You're learning all the instructions. Yeah. You're learning people's names. Names mm-hmm. are really hard for, you know, these kids, for me to remember, I have to remember 200 plus names. It's hard, yeah. but, but that is a sign of respect. And we try to teach the kids. Mm-hmm. It's not, Hey, Thea, or Hey, teacher, Hey, teacher, I, or you get called nurse, nurse. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what is, what is her name? Nurse Maggie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nurse Maggie meds. <laughs> um so you know we try to try to teach the kids that you know it's a level of respect to remember people's names but that's hard so for the first week you're just you know d- getting your feet wet you know mm-hmm. you're overly stimulated you're like wow this is all new and I don't like trying new things I like in my little safe room where I don't have to do all this social interaction and because it's a 24 7 social environment they're doing social immersion and that's yeah. why it works so quickly, though. That's why you yeah. see such an improvement in such a short amount of time because, you know, they're living with other kids, their peers, they're, um, yeah. you know, they're they're with counselors all the time. That's always integrating these, you know, facilitating conversations, um, you know, helping them with de-escalation, mm-hmm. all of these things. And so it, that's why it works so well because it's uh, just such a social immersion. But yeah, the first week is just getting to know all the rules. The second week, you're getting a little more comfortable. You've got people's names down pat. You've got where everything is located, where the dining hall is, where the lake is, where mm-hmm. adventure is with the rock wall and zip line. Um, you know, you, you, you've you got, you, you've been showed the ropes. They've, mm-hmm. they've got it down pat. On travel, they've learned, okay, if I need Miss Thea, I can call her on the phone. That's, she taught me how to use the hotel phone. I just dial her, her number, even though I'm like two doors over, they could just come walk, but you know. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, sometimes I don't want to, which is fine. You know, honestly, our 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 goal across all of our programs is to tucker these kids out. We want to yeah. tire them out uh, with fun, excitingness, but uh, but also, you know, they they're they're exhausted from being socially immersed. So you know, yeah. at night they just want to retreat into their book or the TV or you know, their phone. And, and I, I totally get that, you know, you've done a hard day's work that was disguised as fun, but you've done a hard day's work, you know, for sure. So it's hard for me. Like I consider myself an extrovert, but then like, you know, to an extent, and then you're like, okay, I need like my, my alone time. Like everybody needs to recharge and you have to take care of yourselves before you can take care of others. And I think I don't need to preach that to nurses. Yeah, Um, for sure. But, you know, I, I, I'm a really a firm believer in that. I take care of so many people um, in such a short amount of time. And sometimes, you know, I just need that little recharge. And sometimes it's hard yeah. to find. Sometimes, you know, sure. that's why us counselors and our staff members have to work together and say, yeah. hey, 
You look like you've had a little bit of a stressful day. I saw a little Timmy <laughs> giving you a hard time. Uh, how about you You take a, an hour and just go to the pool by yourself or something, you know, when we get back to the hotel. So, yeah. you know, we really work together to try to give each other those those breaks when, yeah. you know, we're a little those overwhelmed because you got to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. And yeah, I really believe absolutely. in that motto. I think that that's, yeah, that's probably one of the most difficult parts too of the job is, is like being able to find that balance too. And like being able to like separate yourself a little bit and like give yourself that little extra time to recharge. Oh yeah. I mean, it never fails when we go out to dinner. <laughs> if I've had quite a long day, you know, because typically lunch is eaten in our small groups. So, you know, the counselor mm. plus their five kids. And yeah. they, they're, they're eating, whether we're at a theme park, they're eating at a different restaurant, you know, at Subway over here or whatever. But at, at nighttime, typically we go out to a restaurant with the whole group. So there'll be, yeah. you know, if we have 38, 38 kids on a tour, which is full capacity, then we have 40, 48 or so people total with the yeah. staff. So we go out to eat all together, typically a long table or a big, huge private room at a restaurant. And that can be sensory, sensory overload at the end of the day. And you're yeah. still trying to do those conversational nuances and, 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 and work on those mm-hmm. conversational skills. And sometimes I'm, and it's all, Miss Thea, can I order this? Miss Thea, is this over budget? Miss Thea, Miss Thea, Miss Thea, yeah. what are we doing tomorrow? Miss Thea. Yeah. Well, and, and that's another thing. Meals, meals is like such a big, that's a big nurse responsibility too, because allergies, some people are vegetarian, some people are lactose intolerant, some people are gluten-free you know, and like, you're also just trying to navigate all of that and making sure that every kid has, you know, the meal that they, that they will eat. Some people are just really picky, you know, so yeah, there's a lot of just, you know, you eat after the kids are, you know, settled and everything and everybody's got all their stuff, but yeah, I remember meals being a, a, very complex. Just <laughs> yeah, people, very you complex. never would have thought that it, it would be so complex, but it definitely is. And so, you know, after, all of that and I get everybody settled. Sometimes I don't even eat. I'll be like, okay guys, I'm going to the bathroom and I'll go to the bathroom just for 10 minutes and sit in the stall (laughs) because it's quiet in the bathroom. And it's not like a million people calling my name all at once. And I'm sure, you know, nurses, you feel like this, you're working hospitals, ER, the patients are always paging you and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Yeah. Sometimes I just go and seek refuge in the bathroom during dinner. (laughs) Don't tell anybody, oh, why did I say this on this podcast? (laughs) Yeah, right. Now they know where you are, Thea. They'll come find me. (laughs) I think that we are, as nurses, in in inpatient hospital nurses, we're pretty used to, like, that kind of chaos. And so, I don't know, I didn't feel super overwhelmed by it. Or I was kind of used to that, like, type of overwhelming, you know, <laughs> little short spurts of crazy. And then it, like, relaxes. <laughs> it's crazy again. I was actually, that made me, the meal thing made me think of this one sweet, sweet boy that was um, gluten-free. And it was, uh, we were, it was like a continental breakfast situation in the morning in the hotel. And I normally will get up earlier so that I can kind of set up my workspace wherever so that kids can kind of like, you know, mosey on down for breakfast whenever they want. They can come to my table and get, you know, whatever medication if they take it in the morning. (laughs) But I didn't make it earlier than this one kid. And I come down to the continental breakfast and I hear him talking to a woman that I think was, I think we were in Prague and he's like going, gluten free and she's like everything is free (laughs) and he's like gluten and i was like okay i got this i got this (laughs) so funny oh gosh this makes me miss the kids i know so fun i but you saying that i was just picturing us on the disney alaskan cruise and you you always going to get one of your little corner tables and all the people like looking like this lady just got a bunch of drugs on her table. What is she <laughs> yes. doing? And then, right. Yeah. It is quite a production. Breakfast. Yeah. As they're eating their breakfast, they see like kids coming up meds <laughs> and they're like, Oh, <laughs> that's what they're doing. Yeah. And we get like... looks all the time, you know? <laughs> like, oh my gosh. What do you think is some of the most fulfilling parts for you of the job as a whole? Oh, that that's, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, People hear what I do and they think, oh, that's a really cool job. Oh, bless your heart. You're a saint for doing this. And I I don't think that at all. I think 
oh, I, I selfishly do it because it makes me feel good. I mm-hmm. love seeing a kid on day one at camp or on travel yeah. or at the center or on a weekender. You know, they're they're a loner. They're they're filled with it, riddled with anxiety. They're like, oh, I don't know about this. A lot of new stuff is coming at them. And then just starting to break down those barriers, you know, asking them some questions, trying not to overwhelm them and, and introducing mm-hmm. them to another kid that I know they're a lot alike and that they'll get along with. Because, I mean, basically that's what we are is matchmakers for friends. We're basically match.com <laughs> for friends and, <laughs> and it's in person and it's awesome and it's great. Um, but yeah, that's the most rewarding, fulfilling part to me is just making a difference. Because you, yeah. uh, many kids that come to us they they are bullied in school they don't yeah. have any friends whatsoever and that's what their parents tell me I, I i talked to 10 moms today not that i don't ever talk to dads but i talked to 10 moms today and <laughs> almost every one of them said well my goal for my kid is just for them to make a friend to have a friend somebody that they can connect with because mm-hmm. you know in normal mm-hmm. social situations it's it's hard for them to you know not be seen as weird yeah. Um, whereas we see them as quirky, but yeah, just watching them bloom over the course of uh, a, a three week tour or even a weekend, a weekend uh, trip, uh, watching them kind of come out of their shell. And then, yeah. you know, by the end of the tour, they're leading the pack, you know, they're like the popular, popular kid of the group. And they're, they're, you know, telling everybody what to do and what we're going to do. And let's go down to the pool after dinner at somebody asked Miss Thea, you know, it, I, yeah. I'm just always so impressed, you know, um, to see that transformation. So that's the most fulfilling and rewarding part to me. And, you know, of course my job, I get to travel and take these kids all kinds of cool places. Yeah. Um, but frankly, I've been to Disney so many times. I'm sick of Disney. <laughs> I've been to universal so many times. I'm sick of universal, but, but you know, I, that is the most rewarding part to me. It makes me feel good to help others. I'm definitely one of yeah. those, uh, those people that find reward in making others happy. I always sure. have as a kid. I always wanted to do make little surprises or clean my mom's bathroom before she got home from work. And I wouldn't Aww. say anything and she'd walk in there and she'd look, now who cleaned my bathroom? I just <laughs> love that, you know? <laughs> and so I've always been internally rewarded uh, from from helping others and helping others make friends. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's just my favorite thing in the world. So yeah, it, it's, it's yeah. a very fulfilling job for everybody that comes and works at camp, that's why we have such a high retention rate. You know, people just come back for mm-hmm. years and years and years until, yeah. you know, all right, I graduated. I actually have to go to an occupational therapist now. I can't just keep coming to kitty camp, <laughs> but I love it <laughs> and they want to. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you, who do you think would be, um, you know, what type of person or nurse would maybe be a good candidate to be a summer camp nurse? Definitely. I always look for nurses that are, that have outgoing personalities, that Mm -hmm. they have stamina. I think stamina is really important because, you know, this is not like- You're on, you're on. Yeah, you're on, you're on. Uh, You're, you're on all the time. You know, it could be 1 a.m. A kid knocks on our door and says, oh, I have a stomach ache. You, you spend, you know, two hours with them, um, you know, trying Mm -hmm. to, trying to help them. A lot of times uh, the nurses, the, the nurse- uh, just, they just need to give a little TLC. Oh, honey, yeah. you're going to be fine. Cause our kids can get really, uh, excited or they can get really, uh, just overwhelmed about something so small. You have a yeah. headache. That's fine. You have a headache. You're going to be fine, sweetie. It's not a big deal. Well, you're yeah. sure it's not a migraine that's going to turn into something because it's a tumor. No, no, no. You're fine. <laughs> They've been walking in flip-flops all day and they think that they have early onset arthritis and I'm like, <laughs> I think that we probably just have, you know, bad feet, shoes. And then you have <laughs> the opposite. You have those kids that that underplay everything. Remember the kid that in we were at that water park in somewhere in Europe, and he like jumped off of a step and he hurt his foot. And he was limping around the whole day, but he didn't want to miss the rest <laughs> of the water park. And then at the end of the day, when we got on the bus he was like oh nurse my i'm limping my foot hurts and she was like oh let me look at it she was like oh this is really swollen what what did you do (laughs) right and then come to find out he had had surgery and had pins put in his Uh ankle or something and one of the pins popped out and came loose or something gross his mom sent us the x-rays and so then on the way to the hotel we had to get the bus to drop the nurse and the kid off at the hospital 
And he had to be on crutches for the rest of the tour because they couldn't fix the surgery until he got back home. But they um, just like gave him some fancy, <laughs> strong medication so he could deal with it until then. But, oh you know, so we have kids that overplay it and then we have yeah. kids that underplay it. So sometimes you just need to give a little TLC. You're going to be fine. Yeah. You don't have a tumor. You don't have early onset yeah. arthritis. <laughs> yeah. And then some kids are like, well, tell me what happened. Are you okay? It's because, you know, they don't want to fear of missing out. They don't want to miss anything. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to wait till the water park was over to, 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 <laughs> to deal with it. To <laughs> deal with it. And he just, yeah. There was another kid that had. I think was wearing like basketball shorts all day where we were, it was like one of the days where we were like walking everywhere and he had like a ball rash and he was like, I think that this is gangrene. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think so. I'll look so at it. If you want me to look taping. at it. <laughs> so much taping. What is it? It's the powder that you, we always have to rub the like CVS and get Gold water. bond. Gold yeah. Bond. We or always run out of gold Baby bond. powder. Baby powder, I think is what, I don't know. Gold bond is for your feet. I don't what, know what we they use. always have to run the nurses are like oh i need to run to like a cvs yeah. or a pharmacy and, and get more powder yes. all the boys are always chafing <laughs> yeah there was one it was like there was one time when uh, one kid had a sore throat and the next day three kids had a sore throat and then the next day you know three kids and a and a counselor has had a sore throat and i was like oh god and we were in budapest and I didn't have any like, you know, cough medicine or anything. So I had to like, you know, rent to an apothecary to <laughs> figure out like, you know, what they have for sore throats. And I think it was some, you know, herb. It wasn't anything <laughs> that we we had we were used to, but the the pharmacist. I remember was like, that. This is I remember you that use. because you gave me some cough drops that I really liked. I was like, oh, I love these. And you're like, you would. This is hippy dippy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, no wonder I like, like it. This is uh, elderberry, maybe. Or lingon, lingonberry, I think. I don't know. I don't know what it was. But yeah, they were like, oh, yeah. I mean, it's probably better for you, right? There's like so many different medications that are banned here that aren't in the Europe. So I'm like, I'm sure. I mean, I think it worked. It was oh, like at yeah. the end of the trip. I was like, we just got to get it like the next couple of days. <laughs> we just got to get through. Just make it through. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely what I look for in a in a good um, nurse's stamina organization. But nurses yeah. are, are typically organized. That's part of your job. Um, yeah. Organization, stamina, and then just a flexible flexibility. Like I was that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. You never know what you're gonna be doing that day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or what um, you're gonna be dealing with. But I mean that that's a part of you know every every nurse job but you really don't know where you're going to be what you're going to be doing <laughs> right you know because you could you could end up in a hole you could end up at the hospital with a kid you could just be yep. laying at the water park waiting to give uh medication you could be waiting with the backpacks while everybody goes somewhere like flexibility yep. is key we especially on travel i i don't want nurses who think oh this is a fun vacation i can just go shopping i did my yeah. medicine i'm gonna go shopping no right you have to stay with the group we need yeah. to know where you are at all times in case of emergency you yeah. can't just you know be off in the bahamas at the gift shop and didn't tell anybody and right. we're, we're on the bus waiting to leave and we're like where's the nurse we're gonna have to leave without her <laughs> yeah. so definitely need somebody that you know wants yeah. to stay with the group and can deal with the with the chaos because yeah. i mean it is um it's organized chaos yeah <laughs> that's what it is for sure and we know all about that as nurses organized chaos yeah. there's so many i mean we could talk forever about all of the different stories and stuff between between you and i about so many funny stories. everything a, a couple of medical stories i have i remember we were in hawaii <laughs> this kid he's like the funniest kid and he he's always so clumsy he's always like falling and skinning his knee or you know He's just always so clumsy. So his roommate ran to our room and said, and fell out of the shower. And we're like, okay, all right. I'm sure he'll be, be fine. And we walked down there to go see how he was because he was like four rooms down the hall. We walked down the room and there was blood everywhere. And the kid that ran to tell us didn't tell us about the blood even though he knew about it. He just said he fell when he got out of the shower. We're like, oh yeah, he would. Um, and so, yeah, we went in and he had fell and hit it, fell out of the bathtub, 
hit his head on the corner of the sink, like the, the sink thing. And we had to take him to urgent care. He had That's to get right. five stitches, stitches. in his head. I think head. I remember hearing about that. Yeah. Five stitches in his head. And then the kid that with this foot, and that was in a foreign country. You know, foreign countries are yep. a little harder than America. I always have a list of like the closest yeah. hospitals and everything. But, you know, insurance is hard and different. And it's hard yeah. to like figure out the la language barriers and um yeah. yeah. And then we had, um, what else? I was we went to, think to... Some more medical stories. Yeah, there was one. Um, Usually we're was... pretty uneventful, but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's no like, you know, one, one thing that happens on the trip. They're like, oh, okay. Or it, nothing happened in Prague, Budapest, Vienna. I think that that was a pretty, we Most had a pretty, trips, usually... we kept like crossing our fingers. Like this has been a really great, no, <laughs> like nothing crazy. Yeah. We kept knocking on wood. Well, where can nurses apply or find more information about Summit? Definitely just go to www.summitcamp.com and the application tab is right there for staff, uh, for families to learn more. Everything is on our website. Everything's very mm -hmm. transparent. We have tons of videos on our YouTube. So you can mm -hmm. kind of see, you know, uh, camp in motion, travel in motion, the center in motion. You can see everything there and uh, the kids are living and experiencing it and the staff and on our Instagram page, it's Summit Camp and Travel, I post a lot of staff shout outs. So what staff have to say, what Summit means to you. I should get one mm -hmm. from you. And um, we also have camper quotes. So what Summit means to campers. And oh my gosh, read it. If you just read through some of those, oh, they'll pull at your heartstrings. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm sure. When people submit them to me, sometimes I'll be like, I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. But yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on to talk about Summit. I'm so happy we could get you on and we could talk about Summit. This is, it's such a rewarding experience for everybody involved. And I just really am glad we got to plug it a little bit and hopefully that we can send some nurses your way. Oh my gosh. I'm so honored that you had me on. I, just because you're my friend, I listen to your podcast that I'm like, oh, my friend has her own podcast. She's famous. <laughs> And I, I don't know if I ever told you, I used to want to be a nurse a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked, I, I did my like little internship at, when I was in high school, I did my like CNA internship at the nursing home and I fainted almost every day and then they wouldn't let me touch the patients anymore. Even though I had like A plus on all the book work, I was like, this, you know, I was the teacher's pet, but oh I gosh. fainted so many times at the nursing home. They told me I was, they were like, we're going to pass you, but you're not allowed, promise us you're not going to become a nurse and you're not allowed to touch the patients anymore. <laughs> so oh, I, no. could only, I could only feed them and take them out to smoke, which they hated at the nursing home <laughs> because of course, little hippie me, I'm going to be like, you have an oxygen tank. You really shouldn't be smoking. This is silly. I don't know why you're doing this. They'd just be like, oh, shut up and roll me. <laughs> <laughs> Now you have me. Now you have like you know. So I live my through work. listening to your podcast. I love them. So it still makes me want to be a nurse, but I know I know I, I don't have the stomach for what you guys do. You guys are amazing, and oh, you know thanks, you're, yeah. all nurses are definitely undervalued and underappreciated. And I appreciate you. Thank you guys so much. And <laughs> I I hope to have some good nurses this summer. And for yeah. those of you listening, yeah, definitely check us out if it's something that you're interested in. All right. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Talk to you later. Bye, Maddie. Right, bye. That brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in to Nursing Uncharted. To learn more about today's episode, make sure to explore the show notes at AmericanMobile.com slash Nursing Uncharted. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a guest. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to explore the largest database of travel nursing jobs in the industry and the amazing benefits that American Mobile has to offer. Also, a special thanks to producer Jonathan Carey, assistant producers Katie Schrauben and Sam McKay, and Aiden Dykes for the music and editing. Until next time, take care of yourself.